so beautiful and I tell her every day back to my channel i am serene and today's video is another review we're on episode 11 and this episode goes through some stuff but basically this is episode this dedicated to first month anniversary the month anniversary of their marriage and we're just gonna get into it really um i'm not too sure which i'm gonna try and do like the least interesting couples of the season first and then kind of build my way up so we're gonna start with Brie and Vincent and the reason why they're the least interesting is because everything seems to be going like pretty good for them everything seems to be okay they seem like they're in love things is working out and you know like this one of the scenes that Brie ended up being in is um she was out with Paige and Haley, and they were just basically discussing how the marriage is going How's it going? How's everyone getting along? And Brie kind of um, disclosed that she's a bit scared about the whole commitment thing. Not that she doesn't want it, but it just frightens her a bit. You know, like, this is actually a real commitment. Like, is our marriage going to work? Stuff, stuff, stuff. Like, general fair. I think that's, like, a, a, a decent fair to have, like, within the month of your marriage. I think it's, it's okay. Like, I didn't see anything wrong with it. And, you know... So when they do go on their like month anniversary thing, you know what I like Champagne Vini for? Champagne Vini is romantic. So it was nice, really nice to see the effort that he went out to ensure that she felt good. And um uh, they went to like like they were on a boat, like on a dock, like some boat, he rented out a boat, and you know, they watched their wedding all over again, you know, they just sat and enjoyed that. Then they had like a dinner, a nice fish dinner. Cause you know I'm pescatarian. <laughs> Since like Feb, like I'm pretty much like 80, 85 percent pescatarian. So like I was like, well, that looked so good. And um what else did they do? Like they just disclosed and you know basically like put into words how they've been feeling in terms of with the marriage and stuff like that and you know the fears that they have and if they consider themselves married if they feel married and stuff like that and i feel like it was really good a really good conversation but nonetheless it wasn't as <laughs> dramatic it wasn't as dramatic as you would like you know in terms of it being reality tv or whatever but you know as i say like i would always love interracial and intercultural relationships because i think it brings like a good nuance to relationships and so forth i am here for it i think they're cute they love loving each other <laughs> it's just amazing and then we're gonna go into clara and ryan and there was a scene i don't remember how the scene opened up but i just remember ryan looking just so uncomfortable like why does ryan look so uncomfortable oh they were talking about clara moving in her stuff and you know clara is talking and ryan is just like and in conventionals, he kind of admitted that, like, it's a bit overwhelming. Is that the word that he used? Yeah, he's feeling a bit overwhelmed about it. Like, and it's overwhelming just having Clara talk about the fact that she's going to be moving into his house. And he's having to make space for another human. And I find it interesting because I don't know what he thought was going to happen. You were going to get married and then where would you live? <laughs> like, what, what was, what was going to happen it makes zero sense to me. But, yeah, it's like, so he said he's feeling a bit overwhelmed. And you know what? I was just laughing. Like in all the scenes with Cara and Ryan, they always have these weird music. At least that's the time I'd have noticed that Lifetime would just be playing some weird ass music. Because I don't, not, not that I don't like them as a couple, but I mean, like, they're a bit boring. Not gonna lie, they're a bit boring. So I'd be like, mm, okay, like she's talking, he, he's just like, sure, sure, <laughs> sure sure that's all they be saying that's all he be saying and i'm like oh my god so yes and um clara ryan fireball and eric met up to have like i guess dinner or whatever and they're catching up and clara was kind of saying that she's happy that eric and fireball have said that they love each other but i just I got a hint of green eyed monster from her. She was acting out. She sounded a bit jelly. And I mean, like, maybe it's not jealousy, but I do feel like she does feel left out or slighted because Ryan. 
is over here talking about I don't know what to say love and, da, 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 and, da, 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 and I'm just like I am over that like it's not even about the sex right now because to be fair if we're being honest we're probably reacting to like this with him not having sex with her we're reacting like this because he's a guy and that's not usually what happens but we've had numerous girls on this show that have not wanted to have sex within the first eight weeks of the show or like within the show and they've had sex after just because they want to keep that private but it's the fact that he lacks intimacy that just irritates me there's actually no intimacy they just be looking awkward in each other i'm surprised she feels comfortable in his arms because they really do be looking awkward but honey who's um yeah i could just see that she was kind of feeling a bit jelly or whatever but she did come out and say if Ryan hasn't said it within six months, she's going. And I don't give her no wrong. I would leave too. Six months. Even that is a long time. Like, that's a very long time to be with someone, call him your wife or husband, and not say I love you. It's a very awkward time. Like, that's just long. Like, it's long. And especially if they felt that they were ready for marriage, like, for you to be mentally ready for marriage, like, you should be able to tell somebody that you love them because... What are we doing <laughs> like what are we actually doing so yeah so um for their one month anniversary ryan took clara on a helicopter ride which was cute and uh, apparently this was something she had wanted to do this is something that she wanted to do since the honeymoon and she really did appreciate that he remembered but while we're in like the lobby or the waiting area or whatever waiting for it to take waiting for the, the ride to start she's asking him questions and i can't remember the question but let me tell you what i do remember him respond, responding and saying thanks pal and i remember saying to myself thanks pal and then she corrected him on the whole pal thing and i was just like ryan who do you think it is ryan friend zoning clara like guys what is going on like what is actually good? I'm just like, wait, is he friend zoning her? Huh? Cause like, <laughs> not that that would be funny, <laughs> but it would be kind of funny. Like, why is he friend zoning her? Huh? Talking about thanks, pal. Like, ugh, that's so cringe. Like, why? So she corrects him, and I'm like, okay, cool. But then they're going to the helicopter and the only thing i can think about is like why can ryan let his hair go like i don't understand he has a head that is shaped like i don't know like a sandwich a piece of sandwich you know like 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 the bread the shape the shape of the bread and then he just puts the hair in the middle like ryan what are you like let your hair go like just go bald go bald can he grow a beard gonna look funny looking one to eat so yeah but he needs to just i don't know he needs to do something with his hair i don't like that in the middle gel down mohawk no it's not cute like he needs to let it go so anywho's they go on the the honeymoon ride they come back home they're watching their they're having dinner and what's not and you know what i've realized about their conversation Kara speaks a lot Kara talks a lot Ryan don't really talk as much, but the times when they do start to actually interact, they don't actually be having like meaningful conversation. I don't know if they save the meaningful conversation for off the air and outside of cameras, but they don't have meaningful conversation at all. At all. They don't have conversations about anything really. Like Kara tried, I keep calling her Kara, Clara. Clara tries, but Ryan doesn't reciprocate in a way that makes the conversation want to continue. So the conversations always come off come off as being very dead and dry and uninterested, un uninteresting, uninteresting. Oh Lord, what is is? I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word correctly. Uninteresting. Hmm. But nonetheless, you get what I'm saying. But because of that the conversations is just be dry man like engage in actual dialogue like they be having filler conversations you know those conversations that you just fill the noise with that's how their conversation come off to me but okay so then we go to Paige and basuda let me tell you something so i went through a wave of emotions with all the scenes that they were in because i didn't know where i wanted to stand so when Paige first comes to 
screen in this episode Paige is talking about her annoyance with the fact that Basuda bought his baby mom's a new car which is normal this this is a reaction that she should have <laughs> so then they're playing basketball and <laughs> I wrote down she needs to throw the ball at his head like she needs to just like throw the ball at his head so but remember no violence in the relationship we don't do violence in relationships, but she needed to throw the ball at his head. So, anywho, they're talking about the relationship. Paige brings up, like, you've been engaged twice. And, um, he said the first time he was engaged, he was 20 years old. I'm even wary of getting married to people that are under the age of 30. Not even people, men specifically, under the age of 30. So for him to be 20, he wanted to get married. Okay. Basura is talking about what he needs in a relationship or what he wants from the relationship. And she's just willing to compromise a whole lot to ensure that he gets what he wants. But I don't think he wants to do the same for her. But then my mind changed. But follow me. So... Then we go, but then I was just like, go on how for wanting to compromise in this relationship and make it work. You know, like, in the grand scheme of things, we on the outside, we could be talking about her and feeling like she dumb. <laughs> but I mean, like, that's debatable. However, it is her husband. If she wants to work on it, then she can do if she wants to. It's her life. So, anywho, we're at the scene where we're with Haley and Brie. And Paige kind of explains to Haley and Brie, like, how the Bible study thing went. And, you know, just explaining that, you know, he wants to make an effort and, you know, all of that nonsense. She tells them about the car to his baby moms and stuff. And I'm just like, Paige, I wouldn't tell people some of that. <laughs> I would keep some of that to myself and let them watch it just like the rest of the world when it airs on television. But, you know, she tells them everything. And she said that she's now getting to know Basuda. And she thinks that their relationship have, relationship has potential to blossom. And I think I understood that because from the basketball thing, like they seemed like they were getting along. I was even standing to say, oh, you know, I'm seeing a different side to Christopher. And I want to see how this goes. <laughs> oh, how things change. So she then starts to say that she might, she realized that she might actually be in love with the idea of marriage and not necessarily worried about who she gets married to and i was just like round of applause for Paige. <laughs> round of applause for Paige for one self-realization two analyzing the situation for what it is and three realizing where her faults are because i do agree with her i think she's fascinated with the idea of marriage and not necessarily concerned about who she gets married to and who she ties herself to for life and who she picks as the potential father of her children you know like this is somebody that's going to be in your life like forever like no matter what happened he is going to be a part of your story so i'm glad that she has now realized that and um we then go to the whole they're playing pool and you know his interaction with her is still different and i'm like oh like i like this and i'm like oh i literally wrote down i'm getting a different side to chris and and then i said to myself oh maybe his love language is quality time because in all the other times when they're doing activities together he seemed to be relaxing like you could literally feel him relaxing in the scenes so i was like oh like you know what maybe this is what he meant by it's better for us to meet up like i would feel more comfortable with like that whereas she wants a call and he's just like yeah calling seems like a lot of pressure and he's just like i just prefer that we could meet up and i'm just like oh you know like his love language might be quality time and then he even went into his confessionals and he's just like he's beginning to see her in a different light and they're talking they ended up on the couch after the game or whatever and they're talking about um what did she bring up she said that they talk about their communication and them not communicating and chris was just like but what do you suggest and she was just like consistency like the communication is not consistent and then the script 
flipped and i was just like you know what i didn't have emotions i'm beginning i was like oh like let's you know give him some space to develop and then he developed and we spoiled <laughs> and i was just like deal damn 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 so he's just like he's not a phone call guy and i get that because i'm not a phone um no no he said he is a phone call guy he doesn't necessarily like texting and that's who i am like that, that i i am i am that person like i'm proper like you need to call me if you're not calling me you don't tell nobody we're together because there's no point like i'm not texting like te i'm not in high school like call me so i understand that but then chris so then he's just like he's not a phone call guy i mean he is a phone call guy and she doesn't pick up his phone calls and he calls all the time and she, she, she's not answering so she must not want the relationship and she's just like yeah but like i was with my mom but i don't even understand the purpose of their communication because like if someone can't I'm, I'm trying to think like if you call me and i can't answer like do i text you back i don't know like i think yeah i do like i would be like oh hey i'm doing this but I'm wondering, like, why didn't she do that? Like, why is she just let, allowing his calls to just ring out? Like, if you don't want him to call you, like, tell him. But if you're going to ask for a call and he's calling, then pick up the phone. Like, sl slightly, kind of. I was kind of with Chris on this one. Like, if he's calling you, if you don't have to, if you busy at the time, like, message the dude and tell him, like, oh, I'm doing this. Like, if you were your mom, tell him, Chris, I'm with my mother when I'm finished. I will call you like i don't even understand what she was on but i was literally like the way he came with the valve of whom acting like know that he's ready everybody's supposed to just jump on the bandwagon and be ready as well when she been waiting for the last 30 days for him to get his shit together so i'm just like chris don't come and spoil it don't come and spoil it and then chris started to say we are not doing a good job of being spouses and then I was like, Paige, go off on this dude. So she's just like, so you want all of this emotional support. So where was my emotional support when I needed it? Like, where were you from the beginning? So then he's just like, I don't have a connection with you. Um, and I'm just like, what's up with these emotions? Like, cause like, I swear, like literally you went from good and we changed scene and then it was bad. And I was just like, what is going on? The emotional roller coaster of this entire thing was just crazy and i was like but we're getting a different perspective because the way he said like i don't see why he would be lying well then again <laughs> but the way he said that you know i'll be calling you and you don't be answering it makes me wonder like what is she actually doing because he's saying that she only wants to meet up and have conversations while in front of the camera so i am confused as to what's really going on and i don't know how true that is but it makes you think like what's really going on because like Paige looks like she's trying and he just looks like trash really but like how hard is she trying or is she are we just getting all of this because the only times when she try it's on camera i don't know but you know food for thought so anywho obviously they get to their month of month anniversary and let me tell you they get to the month anniversary and <laughs> Paige is the only one in the hotel room or in the in, in the house reminiscing to the wedding and i'm just like chris not chris Paige. did i say chris Paige is the one reminiscing on the photos or whatnot and i was like Paige, if you don't start a bonfire like he walks out of their last meetup talking about he, he wants a divorce the girl is crying on camera she's walking out she's crying and i'm just like I'm sorry for her, but she needs to get these tears out so that she could now go and make a decision about leaving him. And that's just on facts. That's on Mary had a little lamb. Like, she needs to just deal with those tears. Like, sometimes we just need a break of emotion to then make a decision. So I hope when she's finished crying, she just ends it and whatever. But she's not reminiscing on the damn wedding. I was just a like, start a bonfire, do a, throw a full moon party and burn the hell of them things full moon party and burn them burn them so yeah that that's it so now we're gonna go into who is it Haley and jacob and hmm, Haley brought her friend a tarot reader 
to read the energies <laughs> of them too and at first the tarot reader was saying some stuff and i was like hey Lee, this is your friend how much information about this relationship have you told your friend because everything seems so mm. but then the friend came up with a somebody's trying to control it and i think it's you Haley. and i was just like uh-uh and now Haley is ready to Haley is ready to um what did i say defend <laughs> Haley is ready to defend the entire decision to be controlling or whatever or make it seem like, oh, this is why I don't think I'm controlling. And I was just like, look at mouth open story jump out. Honey goes. Jacob is just looking at this tarot man and then looking at Haley and his facial expressions. And I'm just like, Jacob is actually... <laughs> Jacob is hilarious. Jacob is so funny in my opinion. He has that dry sense of humor that just makes me giggle because I'm just like, I would like to know what he's thinking. Oh my gosh. But yeah, so Haley is doing all of that. Like, you know, the tarot reader is saying that Jacob is aggressive and Haley is um what? controlling. But she did say that they're part my life path numbers she said that their life path numbers are connected to each other or something like listen something and the other so anyways they're like okay well if that's the case let's um you know let's work on it but i did realize that Haley don't necessarily want to be accountable for anything in this relationship and that pisses me off like i think she like jacob puts his foot in his mouth all the time like every time they're going good jacob is the one to mess it up by saying something stupid and then she just and then Haley retreats however Haley, th this mix up mix up mix up this mix up mix up mix up is not just jacob's fault like some of this is your doing like the two of you in a relationship so therefore some of it is your doing like it's not just him it cannot just be him like it doesn't even make sense for it to just be him so when she's acting as if like she's not contributing to this shit in any way shape or form i'm just saying just calm down and look at yourself like put a mirror up because some of this is your fault definitely so anyways for their month anniversary thing they're gonna wine tasting and you know they're doing a wine tasting it seems to be fine but i don't know if the liquor hit jacob brain when they sit down for dinner but this has to talk and jacob just after reminiscing jacob was just like you know what when we kissed, the kiss was awkward. I'm just like, this, this, what, Jake, and this is what I'm talking about. He puts his foot in his mouth all the time. Like, how do you come from having such a good time? And apparently, they had a really good time the week prior and stuff like that. Like, they seemed to be walking. And even when they sat to have, I think they had a cheese board, which in cheese boards are amazing. But they had a cheese board, and they're laughing and giggling and, you know, conversing and stuff like that. So I'm just like, how do we get from all of that and then we go to dinner <laughs> and the liquor hit jacob brain and jacob is like yeah the kiss was really off the kiss was off from the beginning like this was off from the beginning and i'm like jacob like calm down like just zip your lip he didn't zip his lip he just continued and um it put Haley off so now Haley's in confessionals crying Ellie's in confessionals crying. So Jacob bring up the, the the example of her not wanting to hug and the disgusted side that she be having after they hug. Ooh, <laughs> the disgusted side that she be having when they hug. And Jacob was just like, I feel like you're just overreacting with a lot of things. Which in the, in, in the grand scheme of things, like hugging him, like you should not be feeling awkward about hugging because you hug stranger. That was Jacob's comment, and I did giggle. <laughs> that was funny he said you hug strangers she's like yeah but like the strangers i don't have to see them again and i was like Haley, that's not a good combat it's not a good combat and then he was just like in four weeks you don't have to see me again in order for us to stay married we would have to be struck by lightning and i was just like wow jake jake jacob is just loose with his lips now yeah I was just like, is that the wine? Because, you know, red wine makes me do things as well. Red wine will make me in my, get me in my feelings. And I'm like, Jacob, are you me? Am I you? Like, why are you saying these things? <laughs> why are you saying these things? I'm just like, it was going so good. And he just spoiled up a thing. So, 
I am definitely sure that they ain't gonna make it to judgment day. <laughs> they're not gonna make it to decision day. And if they do make it to decision day, they're gonna say no. They're not gonna stay married. And then we go to Eric and Fireball. And I promise you. We're getting to Eric and Fireball, and I promise you. So we're back with Eric and Fireball. And I promise you, I feel like the more we get into this season, it's the more I like Virginia. I'm actually feeling kind of bad that I'm calling her Fireball, but that name is gonna stick. I'm so sorry for the noise. Like, anywho, so the first time I think they're on screen is that the dinner that they went out with Clara and Ryan. And I wrote down, I don't understand why Fireball has so many opinions about everybody else's relationship. She was in confessionals talking about, oh, she's just worried about, um, she's just worried about, what a girl name? Clara, if she's gonna get hurt in a relationship, blah de blah de blah de blah de blah And I was just like, worry about yourself. <laughs> worry about yourself! <laughs> worry about yourself, like, don't worry about me. Like, don't worry about her. Like, worry about yourself because your boyfriend, you need to worry about making sure that your boyfriend don't go and storm the Capitol, allegedly. But yeah, like, I don't understand, like, why you just know it, man. Like, mind your business. So then, they're at a picnic, and I was like, the wine is back. And Eric was feeling really good that she did a picnic because he's just like, no one has ever done a picnic just for me. And I was like, oh, that's cute then because I, I think stuff like that cute. So it wasn't too bad. And then they go into talking about living together because Kara is starting to move her stuff into Ryan's place. And Virginia was just like, yeah, I don't want to live in your house. Eric boss out, yeah, I don't want to live in your house either. So what the two of y'all going to do? <laughs> what are you guys going to do? Like, <laughs> what are they going to do? Where are you guys going to live? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not gonna lie. I had a good kiki to all of this because I was just like the two y'all can't be like this Like she don't want to live in his apartment and I could see why based on his behavior <laughs> Based on his behavior. I wouldn't want to live in his apartment either Like he's not making her feel comfortable in terms of like he's very he mansplains a lot He's very much like it's my way or the highway. Can you imagine living in a house with somebody that acts like your dad? okay so he said if you we're gonna be together you're gonna have to live with me because that's just what it is and i'm just like why is he so definite he gets on my nerves like i'm just like eric shut up <laughs> like i literally wrote eric shut up like why is he so annoying he is spoiling the entire relationship like he is like in the beginning everyone thought in the beginning everyone thought that fireballs drinking would have spoiled the relationship no eric's attitude is spoiling the relationship and his attitude stinks so i can see that she so then he turns it into are you not comfortable with me like no you make it uncomfortable like she's just not saying it but i'm telling you the, the way you come off it's all it's very my way to highway it's too definite the girl wants to be sure that she's secure Idiot. so anyways so i can see she's annoyed and she's just rolling her eyes <laughs> and i'm like girl do not so eric takes so for their month anniversary eric takes her to his hangar or the family's hangar or something and he shows them the family play i mean i like i like <laughs> I like bougie people. Bougie people be funny and fun at the same time. And I just really was like, you know, it's nice that their family has a plane. You know, like Virginia has kind of potentially married into a well-off family. And women should marry into well-off families. I think women should be comfortable. And you know what? I am happy for her. Nonetheless, he's little and he's very much MAGA. But it's okay. I, I think it's okay. I think that's okay. Not the MAGA part, but like definitely being married into a, a family that is, or with a man whose family is very well much capable of taking you, taking care of you and your potential kids. That is it. Like, that is definitely it. So, I thought it was cool. And he shows how which plane is their family's plane. And 
they go through down they go through like memory lane on the weddings and they read each other's vows back to each other and I thought that was cute and then he takes it out in the plane and when I saw the little thing <laughs> I was like nah -uh. <laughs> I cannot like why is this what <laughs> like I know it would have been tiny but I didn't think that it would have been like that tiny I was pretty much like oh oh that's small like we literally going like back to back this is not like side to side and but it was cool for her to like you know enjoy the plane ride i thought that was really cute he did it uh, <laughs> he did the plane ride with her and you know he did that zero gravity thing mm -mm. see that would make me pass out <laughs> because why the things going up and we're going down no 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 so but nonetheless the whole thing was amazing and i think you know in the grand scheme of things i think it's pretty cool that he's a pilot like I think that's pretty cool and then they exchange gifts and let me tell you I laughed for like 10 minutes straight <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god why did Virginia get him a blanket with she and Rocky on the face front of the blanket <laughs> oh my gosh like that's such an ugly gift <laughs> he was just like oh, thank you i love it and i'm just like no you don't no you don't it was ugly <laughs> it was very ugly and that's the whole way of saying you need to take this with you so therefore if he's ever cheating like some chick is lying down on her face like listen she know listen it is hilarious i thought that was a very ugly gift and but she also gave him like vouchers which i think like sexual innuendo type vouchers for him to claim and i thought that was cute because why not like that sounds like a really nice thing for him to cash out and stuff i think that's very cute you know like be like spontaneous like when y'all arguing you could just pull a leaflet and be like yeah this is how we're gonna solve this one so i thought that was nice and then if the blanket wasn't bad enough Eric had a gift. <laughs> Eric's gift. <laughs> Eric's gift was cardinal. Is that what it's called? Cardinal longitude and latitude. The cardinal la uh, numbers. Listen, I don't know what it's called. But the longitude and latitude, like the, 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 the things of where they got married. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so this is what y'all do, because both of those gifts was terrible gifts, or maybe not the like the cardinal location or whatever that thing is called, but the blanket was a definite like Virginia wagon. But anyways, this is the end and I will see you guys in my other review. Remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. Tell me what y'all think. I be loving our conversations after my episodes. I love, love, love it. I'll see you guys in the next Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're rocking with my content and rocking with this look, remember to like, comment, share and subscribe for more videos like this. If you love to see me create any makeup look and speak about any topic, just leave your suggestions in the comment section down below and I'll be definitely picking those up. And remember, stay beautiful inside and out.